afternoon, everybody. Welcome to another sick Monkey London car review. You've got my main man, Mr. B. Say, Mr. B. Today I'm driving a E36 BMW Compact, but it's not your normal BMW Compact, because it's a diesel. And it's gonna be the first diesel I've ever driven on the channel. Engine-wise, you've done a full 330 diesel engine swap. 340 diesel engine swap, yeah, from an E46. And that's a straight fit. A straight fit, mate, yeah. So no. all the engine mounts are the same. Engine mounts are the same, yeah. Bolt straight up. What about the gearbox? Gearbox is about the 330 diesel as well, yeah. The diesel box as well. So it's stock turbo. Stock turbo. And boost is about 1.5 bar. 1.5 bar, yeah. Horsepower? About 280. And torque? About just shy of 500. Foot 500 foot-pounds of torque in an E36 compact. So I'm, I'm guessing it's pretty lively. Very nice. <laughs> <laughs> A little bit of a straight, so we'll show you what she's all about. Obviously, you've got to drive this a bit differently to a petrol car, haven't you? Because all the torque effectively is low down. Yeah, all the power's low down. It's low down, yeah. Right, this is a nice second gear pull. Quietest drift car I've ever ragged. <laughs> oh, it's quick, man. What's it like to drift? Sustainable. Yeah, Very and sustainable. cheap. And cheap, yeah. I was going to say, what sort of MPG, MPG do you do on a drift day? Eco, <laughs> eco skids, mate. Yeah, like 45, 50 MPG is pretty decent. Definitely save yourself a few pennies. Body work wise, what have you done to the body? This Lucy E46 side skirts, M Sport bumper, uh, custom rear diffuser, custom front splitter. Pretty much it, mate. So you sort of try to retain it leave it looking sort of relatively simple. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Pretty, yeah, try and keep it basic. What I didn't actually realise before we got on this is that this has actually got the same wheelbase as a normal E36. Same wheelbase as a, as a normal 36, saloon, coupe, they're exactly yeah. the same. Because yeah. I always assumed the E36, just because it looked shorter, had a shorter wheelbase, but it's actually identical. Identical, yeah. 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 So I always thought these were much sort of snappier than a conventional coupe or saloon to drift, but I guess they're exactly the same. <laughs> Like the brakes, I noticed the calipers and the discs look a bit bigger. What, what brakes are you running on this? Yeah, 330 brakes all round. Uh, that's get some custom hangers made for the rear brakes to fit the, the horrible E30 rear setup there. Yeah, the I got you, man. Hydro handbrake? Hydro, yeah, custom cool. fitted, all nice. Every drifter away. needs a good handbrake. <laughs> what about the uh, differential? Got L LSD? It's just locked, mate, yeah, welded up. Oh, you got a wet welded diff. Nice and predictable. And then coilovers? Cheap and cheerful HSDs, cheap and basically. Cheerful. Yeah, what about really things doesn't... like the arms and like the bushes and stuff? Have you changed any of that? Yeah, all poly, fully poly bushed. Um, standard front suspension arms, um, modded hubs. And then what about the wheels? Because you said you did have a set of BBSs on it, but you had a little bit of John action. <laughs> <laughs> Don't John. worry, man, I've destroyed so many sets of wheels, so <laughs> you're, you're not, a, not on your own with that one. These were a bit of a last minute buy, yeah, so. <laughs> Interior wise, you've removed the rear seats, but then you've sort of carpeted it, which is actually quite nice because it's pretty it's pretty quiet in here. Yeah, it's sound it's sound deadening carpet. Ah it's, right, it's, that's it's, why it's so quiet. Yeah, it's got a sound deadening quality to the carpet. And you've left all the door cars in, all the interior, all the dash. Yeah, just yeah. They don't weigh much anyway. No, no point in changing them to be fair. It is quite nice though because it is really quiet in here, and obviously having a diesel as well, it's super super Do you daily this car? I, yeah, some, yeah, I don't use it for daily daily runs and but stuff. You do sort of use yeah. it quite often. Because it's surprisingly easy to drive. With this diesel engine, obviously, you've got loads of torque low down. Yeah, yeah. Um, you know, I guess when you drive a sort of normal Ford pop one of these, they're quite sort of gutless and you really have to sort of rev them to get them to go. <laughs> what seats are we sitting in? The Corbos. Yeah, and yeah. you've got Sparco harnesses. Sparco harnesses, yeah. yeah. What about things like a roll cage? Do you think you'll do that eventually? Eventually, roll cage, yeah. But for now, it's just more of a road car than a track yeah. car, so. There's that sort of line, you know, yeah, how you far do you push it? Yeah. What does it rev to? It re well, it's been pushed from, well, it's rev to standard about five grand. It's been pushed up to about six and a half. So you've raised the rev limit yeah, a little you, bit. Yeah, you rarely want to take it to Because six obviously, there's not a lot of torque at the top of the there's rev no range. no power at the top, yeah. It's all at the bottom. It's all between 1500 and probably up three and a half is your main 
power of the torque and it's yeah. all about the torque in this side. Did you buy this car originally with a, a four pot in it? It was it bought the shell with no engine in it. Oh it was a bare shell. Bare shell, yeah. And then how did you source the end how did you source the three thirty diesel line? Three thirty D was just sourced online, just a rear ended three thirty saloon, yeah. And, and then you just you just robbed the engine out of it. Everything what did you give for it if you don't mind me asking? It, I would have paid for it. I paid about five hundred quid for it. Because it'd been rear ended. For the whole no, car. Yeah, nobody wanted it. And nobody obviously wanted. you're a mechanic yourself, so you've done all the work yourself. Done all the work yourself. How yeah. long has it taken you from starting off with a sort of shell? And the engine to get into this point? Uh, it took me about eight months. Eight months. Really from start to finish, yeah. And you, did all, and you did it all yourself? Done it all myself, Fair yeah. Fair play, man. Yeah, sourced all the parts, done all the researches and stuff for the wiring, because wiring was a nightmare going from 46 to a 36 shell. Ah, uh, yeah, because obviously there's a lot more electrics and stuff yeah. than 46. So you had to get quite a lot of the things deleted, ABS deleted, all the traction controls deleted, DPS deleted, CGR deleted. Fucking hell, there's a lot of, lot of yeah, messing about. Yeah, it's quite, quite a bit of messing about. How much do you think it sort of cost you to get the car to this point? Uh, it's probably cost me about four grand. Four grand all in yeah, with the car, with the engine. Car, the bits. I had quite a lot of stuff from a previous car, like the seats and the hubs and coilies and stuff. Yeah. So yeah, it's not hasn't cost me much to be fair. So have you always been into sort of BMWs? Yeah, always been a BMW man. Always had rear wheel drive, or did you ever start off with that front wheel drive madness? Always had a I had a compact for my first car. As your first car? My first car. Yeah. What happened to that one? That got two eight swapped. Um, and just got drifted to death, <laughs> and eventually, yeah, it just got stripped for parts in the end. Bought a Z3. And so you had a petrol one before. So what made you think I'm going to put a diesel lump in it just to be a bit different? Yeah, well, I had the BMW E60 530 diesel. Fell, uh, in, fell in love with the, the engine. Use of that diesel power. Yeah, fell in love with the engine. And I fell in love with the chassis as a compact when I was my first car, and I just thought I'd make them have baby. What do you think the 0 to 60 is of it? Not it's quick. I would say probably. I don't have a speedo, so. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. You don't want That's it. Andy. Oh man, the acceleration on this is literally electric. Have you had any sort of races with unsuspecting <laughs> supercars or faster cars? There's, uh, yeah, yeah, because I was chasing a Porsche up to. Um, to uh, Horsham the other day, and uh, it definitely wasn't expecting me to be on his ass. <laughs> he looks bad, he well, doesn't know it's a diesel, but the fact it's a fucking diesel compact <laughs> pushing a Porsche around, I bet it's a bit unheard of. That's the thing with it, it is a bit of a sleeper this car, although it's a little bit drifty on the outside, mm. I guess people don't really expect it to be quite so no. quick. Could you modify the, the steering angle? Yeah, it's got modified hubs on it. Um, and you got like sort of welded cut knuckles. Welded cut knuckles, that's all cool. it is. Yeah, that's all you need. Me and Mr. B were sort of talking earlier about obviously with drift tax and, and you know um, demand of these cars has gone up and supply has gone down. Parts of prices have sort of start to go a lot higher, haven't they? Yeah, they definitely have. Yeah. But they're still they're not too bad on Beamers, but I mean you know you look at the sort of drift ready E36 these days. In the old days you could pick them up for 500 quid. Now they're fucking what two three grand? Two three grand. Yeah, yeah it's yes. crazy, isn't it? Trying to find a nice OE original standard M Sport 2A, you'll, yeah, you'll, you'll be pushed to, find find, a, yeah. pushed to find a nice unmolested one. What's it like in the rain? Because <laughs> we've got a dry day today and it's still pretty wheel yeah. spinning. What's it like when it in in the, in the rain? It's lethal. I mean, we had a had a mate in it the other day. We were going up a going up a hill on a dual dually. And the tires were a little bit scarce on tread, and it was spinning up in fifth. You, just, <laughs> you know, it hits that torque, and it just, just yeah, wants spinning, to go. Yeah. Spinning, yeah, it just spins. Even with like the M, like M52s and the S50s, S52s, you do have to sort of drive them quite hard to make them go quick. Yeah, you got to, you got to you've push got to them right them, up. Yeah, push them right up. And I guess with this, you've got a bit more longevity and reliability because you're not having to stress the shit out of the car when you drift it. Yeah. Because effectively, you can do quite low RPM skids. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Do, do a mini roundabout in third. Yeah. <laughs> in fucking fifth on idle. Yeah, you can. Whereas with me, you know, I'm constantly like on the, on the limited 24 7. <laughs> Just about wraps this review up. Massive thanks to Mr. B for bringing the car down. I can say this car is pretty goddamn sick. You've definitely converted me. If you told me that I would enjoy a diesel E36 compact five years ago, I would have told you you were lying. <laughs> but I must say this car is really, really sick. Super quiet, really reliable, loads of torque, and cheap to run. Hope you guys enjoyed this video. Make sure to check out my Patreon down here. We can do with all the support we can get. Uh, give the video a like, put any comments down below, I'll do my best to get back to you, and we'll see you soon. Peace.